What's been the biggest advancement in road cycling in the last five years? Sub 700 gram carbon frames, deeper and wider aero rims, maybe it's electronic shifting. I'm going to suggest another development, tubeless tires. Don't roll your eyes and consider me another tech nerd looking to make your life more difficult with air compressors and sealants. The benefits are real and the downside is largely due to improper installation, industry leaders not yet ready to make the tubeless leap, and the reality that sometimes what feels faster isn't always faster. Riders associate the feel of high pressure with fast rolling. Unless you are on a velodrome, this is rarely true. High pressure creates bouncing. This bouncing creates deformation of the tire as it loads up and rebounds thousands of times over the course of a ride. This deformation takes energy, energy that should be utilized to move forward. The tube itself also hurts you here. It steals yet more energy as it moves against the interior of the tire, creating heat instead of speed. You want your tire on the ground, and to do that, you need to ride lower pressures. This isn't possible with a tube unless you want your pinch flat risk to increase dramatically. Tubeless allows you to dial in a pressure that keeps your tire on the ground and eliminates the pinch flat concern. These low pressures offer more than just lower rolling resistance. They can fundamentally change the ride of your bike, turning a harsh ride into smooth, compliant comfort. The comfort and lower rolling resistance are reason enough to give tubeless a try, but let's face it, those benefits can be a bit subjective and are not above dispute by some non-tubeless manufacturers. One benefit is beyond debate and reason enough to make the move. Tubeless tires hate to flat. With a properly installed tire running sealant, you're more likely to wear your tire out before you flat it. It is that effective. One of the biggest factors holding tubeless back is installation. With conversion kits, sealants, air compressors, and a lot of misinformation, the tried and true tube in a clincher seems much easier. In reality, installing tubeless should take almost no more time, equipment, or mess. We spoke to the folks at Hutchinson, the main players in tubeless technology, about how to correctly install their tires on a tubeless ready rim. Keep in mind, what follows is not a tubeless conversion. We are putting tubeless ready tires on a tubeless ready rim. With Shimano, Hutchinson, Easton, Campy, and many others making tubeless ready rims, and many other rumored to be entering the game, great tubeless wheels can be had at great prices. Using a 50% soap and water mixture, we filled a Hutchinson stick air lever, getting the sponge at the end soaked with the mixture. We then ran the sponge end all the way around each bead. Of course, a regular kitchen sponge will work just as well. The difficulty of mounting a tubeless tire has been absolutely blown out of proportion. We have mounted standard clinchers on some rims and had much more trouble. You are going to mount a tubeless tire the same way you would a standard tire, with a couple of things to keep in mind. Be sure the tire is clear of the larger tubeless valve before you get too much tension on the bead. If you need to use a tire lever for those last few inches, make it plastic and don't slide it laterally along the bead and rim. Keeping your tubeless bead in good shape is very important. Inflate the tire before you put in any sealant. Don't worry, a Hutchinson tire with a quality tubeless rim will hold air without sealant. It can take a lot of air volume to get a tubeless tire's bead snapped into the rim hooks. This is where the use of a compressor came in. Instead, simply use a CO2 cartridge. They offer more than enough punch to seat the bead. An audible pop or snap sound will let you know you're in the bead. Now, you're going to let the air out while the bead stays seated in the rim. Here's the tip to avoid any mess. Make sure the tubeless wheels you buy come with valves that have a removable core. If they don't, upgrade. Use a set of needle nose pliers, remove the core. The bottle of Protect Air has a one-way valve. Just slide it over the valve top using the markings on the side of the bottle. Put in 30 milliliters of sealant. To reinflate your tire with the beads in place, all you need now is a regular floor pump. Put in the pressure you want to ride, 80, 90, 100 PSI, and then spin and wobble the wheel to distribute the sealant. These five steps will have you quickly rolling with the benefits of tubeless, and overall, it's an absolute magic carpet ride. It's plush, yet responsive, supple, yet lightning quick, all at once. And of course, flats are a rare thing indeed. A big additional benefit to tubeless is the elimination of the tire popping off the rim in the event of a flat, which can quickly ruin a ride if it's a front flat and you happen to be going downhill and cornering. 
The Hutchinson Atom tubeless tires we used are the newest addition to the family and the lightest they make at 270 grams. There are lighter standard clincher and tube options on the market, certainly when you consider the sealant, but none of them will come close to the Atom's flat protection, comfort, and low rolling resistance. For a more detailed look at tubeless, pick up issue 7 of Peloton Magazine on newsstands now. Thank <laughs> you.